Hi and welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir and today you can see I'm talking a little bit about files. Uh, files are something that's obviously quite necessarily necessary when it comes to jewelry making or any other number of crafts that are out there. This is going to be the best and easiest way most of, most of the time to remove small amounts of metal or material that is not desired. Uh, there's a huge range of files that are available out there that you can choose from and not only a huge range even in quality but also in the fineness of the the cutting teeth themselves and which allows you to remove more material or less material have a more coarse uh, cut versus a very fine cut and of course the, you can see that there are also different sizes and shapes as well in jewelry, a lot of times I use what are called bastard files, and that's what you see here. And these are six inch bastard files. And when I very first started, not knowing a whole lot about files at all, I just went to the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever home improvement store I had and bought a couple of files, got home, started working, and realized very quickly that some files just are not as good as others. So, really quickly, just to kind of show you, uh, this is actually one that I inherited. You can see it's actually got a lot, quite a bit of rust on there and a lot of usage. And you may or may not be able to see, and let's see if I can zoom this in a little bit, uh, the coarseness of this file. So you can kind of see that the teeth in here are really quite coarse. There are different purposes for different files. And uh, the really coarse ones are not necessarily the best when it comes to working with metal. Uh, I find that a lot of times they're too coarse and I end up just grabbing the metal rather than filing it and removing it. So, you know, I picked up a couple of different files that were a little finer at the hardware store. And, you know, they're great too. You can kind of see on this one. Let's see if I can get a good shot of that for you. So you can see in here that it's definitely not as coarse or as gritty as what the, the previous file was. But at the same time, that's about as fine as you're going to find if you go to a hardware store. One time, a few, I guess it maybe about two years back, one of my friends said, you know, she wanted to thank me for doing some of the Tool Time Tuesdays, and she said, I really want to send you a file. And I said, well, that's great, but I have a whole ton of files. And she says, yes, but do you have a nice file? And I said, sure, I've got plenty of nice files thinking, you know, my files were nice and clean, but no, no. She sent me a Grobe file that was a cut number two, and I could not believe the difference that this file made in a lot of the pieces that I was doing. I was able to get a much more finished product at the end of it and not have to go back over it with sandpaper or anything else like that after I had done fi my filing because that's what was happening before. I would go through, file my edges, and then I'd have to go back over everything with sandpaper to kind of rough, you know, smooth down some of the rough edges that were left by the files. So then I decided, well, I'll buy another file that's a cut four. And it's like going up in progression as you use sandpapers. You might start with a 400 grit, and then you go to a 600 grit, and then a 1200 grit. Well, it's the same type of thing. And every time you go up a number in your files, you get finer and finer qualities. Now, in addition to the cut, there's also different shapes. Now these are two different kits. They have the same files that are in them. However, they're different cuts. So each one of them has, um, there's a barrette file, and a barrette file has the cuts on one side, but on the back side, it's smooth. And this is really nice anytime you have to get into some corners or tight spots, and you don't want to remove metal all the way around the file, but only on one side. This comes to a nice sharp point. It's a little bit rounded as it comes up and then we've got the flat sides here along the top as well. The next one is a flat file. Okay, this is a pretty standard file that pretty much every jeweler shop should have or even hobbyist or whatever. And then we have two others. One is a half round and the other is a half round ring file. 
and they, they look nearly identical except for their cuts and a little bit of their slopes. So the ring file has a little deeper curve than what the half round file has, or while well, the half round has a little deeper, vice versa, whatever you pick. But anyway, the half round is truly more half round, whereas the ring file um, has not, it's a little bit more of a shallow cut, okay? And these are the same files, but again, they are a cut four, which is just a finer file cut. Now again, you've also got smaller files. These are needle files versus the bastard files, and they are just much smaller. And they go even tinier than this. I have a set of micro files somewhere here in my studio, hiding from me. <laughs> but anyway, so needle files, and of course, they again come in all sorts of different shapes. I don't know if you guys can see this on my little thing up here. You've got half round, square, triangle, round. And of course, you know, all of those shapes come in the nicer files as well. Uh, it just depends on how much you want to pay for them. You know, you can pick up some really inexpensive files from the hardware store for anywhere, I would say, under $10, easy. And then as you get into some of the nicer files, and as you go up in the cuts, you know, so if you've got a zero, a zero cut is going to be less expensive than if you do, say, a two, or in this case, a four. Okay, and then they also have sometimes where you can save a little bit of money if you buy a set of all of them. So a set like this with a zero cut is probably, I think, around close to like $70. Okay, and a set of the same thing in a number four is about $75. I was talking with some other friends today about how they clean their files and what files they use. I, I did ask about cleaning files because I have always used what are called file cards. And they're just these little sticks that have these brush or bristles on them. And what you do with them is you take your, your file card, put it onto your file, and you go perpendicular, or parallel rather I guess, to the cut on the files. So you're not trying to go against it or with it. You just kind of go right into the grooves and just brush everything out. Now this file card is a new one for me. It's obviously quite old, but I inherited it from somebody. And this one actually has a little pin that's got kind of a needle head on it where you can go through and pick things out. And I was kind of excited to learn today that a lot of metalsmiths don't use this. They have another trick that they use where they take a piece of brass bar. And in this case, I had some 18 gauge uh, brass sheet and I just cut it down and then put a little curl into the end of it so that I can use it as a pusher. And what you do to clean out your files is again, you're gonna come in and you're going to go with that, or go you know into or across that cut so that you can come in and you can push out any garbage. And I was actually very surprised at how much material and gunk I was able to remove just by going through and cleaning my file like so, with this little thing of brass. And again, you know, it's just a little thing of 18 gauge brass. You can pick it up at a lot of the hardware stores, um, maybe even a hobby shop, or you might even have some laying around. Um, during that same conversation, several metalsmiths had piped in and said, oh, I didn't know to do it with brass. I've always done it with copper. So you could do either one, but brass it tends to be, or seems to be, uh, a little more sturdy than what the copper would be.